Plants are everywhere. Just like other living things, they grow and adapt to their environment. From small seeds, they sprout from the ground and grow tall. Their leaves increase in size and number, and their flowers bloom. Many plants even bear fruits. Have you ever asked yourself how plants do these wonders? In this lesson, you will, first, observe the root and shoot systems in plant. Second, identify the different parts in root and shoot systems and third, explain the importance of root and shoot systems in plants. Activity number one, visit your school garden and observe the plants. Choose one plant and try to identify its parts. In your notebook, copy the table below. Draw the parts of the plant you observed in the correct column. Based on your observation and how you understand the parts of a plant, write down the function of each identified part. Then, answer the guide questions. Like humans and animals, plants consist of cells, tissues, and organs that make up a system. A typical plant has two systems, the root system and the shoot system. How do these systems work, and what parts are involved? Let us find out. The root system. The primary function of the root system in plants is to anchor or secure the plant to the ground and absorb water and nutrients from the soil. Root systems play an essential role in maintaining the plant's growth and overall stability. Root systems can be taproot or fibrous root, depending on the plant type. The taproot has a primary thick main root that grows vertically into the soil, like carrots and radish. While, the fibrous root consists of numerous thin roots of similar size that arise from the base of the stem like onions, sweet potatoes, and rosemary. Let us take a look at the two types of root systems. The key roles of the root system 1. Anchorage and support The roots anchor the plant in the soil, providing stability and preventing it from being easily pulled up by wind or other environmental factors. This anchorage is important for the plant's overall growth and structure. 2. Absorption of water and nutrients, the roots absorb water and essential nutrients from the soil. Water and nutrients are then transported from the root system to other parts of the plant. Some plants, like carrots and radishes, store excess nutrients in their roots. The plants use these stored nutrients when there are few available nutrients in the soil or when the plants require additional energy for growth and reproduction. 3. Soil aeration. As roots grow and penetrate the soil, they create paths that allow air to reach deeper into the soil. This improves gas exchange in the root system benefiting both the plant and organisms living in the soil. 
Chute System The chute system is the aerial part of the plant, which grows or shoots upward, while the root system is composed of organs that grow beneath and into the ground. The chute system in plants is another important system of their body. It includes all the above-ground structures of the plant that support various functions. It consists of the stems, leaves, flowers, and fruits, each serving specific roles. The key components and functions of the shoot system. The stem is usually long and can be herbaceous or woody, depending on the plant type. It provides structural support for the plant, holding the leaves, flowers, and fruits. It also facilitates the transport of water, minerals, and nutrients between the roots and leaves. The leaves are flat, thin structures with a large surface area for sunlight absorption. They often have a network of veins for nutrient and water transport. The leaves are the primary site for photosynthesis, the process of food making in plants. During photosynthesis, plants convert and store light energy to chemical energy in the form of sugar and starch. The leaves also play an important role in releasing water vapor, a process known as transpiration. Let us take a look at the common parts of a flower. The flower of a plant is its reproductive structure which is responsible for producing seeds. The male parts of a flower are the anther and filament, together known as the stamen. The female parts are the stigma, style, and ovary, collectively called the pistil. These parts facilitate pollination and fertilization, the reproduction processes in plants. Some flowers have various colors, shapes, and odors to attract pollinators like insects and other animals. Fruits come in different forms, which can be fleshy like berries or dry like capsules. They develop from fertilized flowers and have fleshy or hard outer layers to protect the seeds inside them. Some fruits are edible and can be eaten by humans and animals, while others are not. All right, kids, to wrap things up, let's check out the diagram below and see all the parts together. Okay class, let's do activity number two. Now, it's time for activity number three.
Class, a horticulturist is a person who is trained in the science of growing fruits, vegetables, flowers, or ornamental plants. In our activity number four, using other sources, search about the work of a horticulturist in taking care of plants. Then, imagine that you are a horticulturist. Choose one plant that you would like to grow and care for. In one paragraph, explain why you chose this plant and how you would take care of it. 